Hi, we're a little bit early, but what the heck, right? I'm with Eric Dobrat, sports guy here at yes. News 8, and this is Fireside Chats with Nyberg. Um, you'll notice that we have... Um, sports Edge Backwards. Sports Edge Backwards, yes. which is perfect. We have a hat we'll talk about, a baseball. We have some bobblehead guy, yep. which we'll get to. And you may be able to see this two lovely plants, oversized mother-in-law tongue. That's what wow. they're called. Did you know that? There's no, those aren't from the sports department, though, Nyberg. Yes, they're sitting right we don't, across we don't from guard your desk. We don't garden in the sports department. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he's a really funny guy. You may not know that, uh, but he's coming up on his 20th anniversary at News 8. This badge right here proves an eyebrow. Okay, so, look at that yeah. kid right there. So again, there. it's backwards, but we want to get the full... Well, you a lot have, of cheeks, yes. You about 20 than? pounds heavier back then, yes. Oh, okay. I wasn't on TV Do you then. diet? Yes, not enough. What do you eat? Everything. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay, so Annie Taylor is, is with us. Hi. Yeah, and peop, uh, people will be joining us. Okay, okay. so let's, let's we, these are deep probing I questions hope so. that yes. happen. I'm here. ready to be probed. <laughs> Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. I was born in Meriden and lived in Bristol till the third grade. And that is so funny. You get a kick out of this. So I hope I find it funny. I get a, no, so I get a Facebook message yesterday from my first grade teacher. Hi. Hi, Eric. I'm Patricia. She's got married since I had her, but it said, I think I was your first grade teacher. Patricia, are you watching? Yeah, and so she, so a random, so this is what, 1981, 82? I was in second Which seems grade, like yesterday first grade? to me, yeah. actually. I got so married in 19. I randomly just got an email from my first grade teacher. Because she wanted to be a Facebook she friend? She must have with seen you? me on TV. No, she didn't even ask for a friend. She just sent me a random note saying, hey, did I teach you in the first grade? And I'm that was sure it? Did. She didn't want to? I'm anything? proud of you. Take care. Oh, how cute. So I First sent her a note back saying, yes, you did teach me. And I said, and I married a teacher. So See there that? you go. Denise, hello. Yes. I hope, is Denise watching? She's in the car with the kids. They're out doing stuff. So, so she told you not to embarrass the family name? Oh, she knows better. I won't embarrass <laughs> the family name. <laughs> okay. How'd you, uh, where'd you go to college? So I started at the University of South Florida. I went there for two years. And my whole plan was, look, I grew up in Old Saber. I never went away to sleepaway camp. I never went anywhere. Always you were a cool. sheltered child? Yes, with uh -huh. my family, my two younger brothers, and my mom and dad. I said, I need to get away. I need to grow up. People still think I need to grow up. But He's not grown up. I need to grow up. So I said, I'm going to go away to, I'm not going to California, but let's go to Florida. My grandmother, my mom's mom, lived about a half hour outside of Tampa. So I went to University of South Florida for two years, had a great time. Probably I still, too much fun. I did. And then I transferred to UConn after two years because I knew... I was going to think about getting in this business, and I'm like, Tampa, Florida, New York, Boston. Right. So I went to UConn, journalism and political science degree. All right, and, and he turned out okay, and he has two gorgeous kids. Hi. Say hi to Peggy. Hi, Peggy. How are you? Yeah, she's good. All right, so how'd you end up in sports? Did you play sports? Played sports my whole life. What did so you play? Growing up, baseball, soccer. Were you any good? No. I mean, ba baseball was okay. Basketball. Uh, and then in high school, I played football. We didn't have football in Old Saber until my senior in high school. Really? They, so they had it when I was younger, and we were in eighth grade. They had all of us come to the spring practices. Okay, you guys are going to be fresh next year. Budget problems, not enough interest. They took it away. So my dad and a group of his friends started the Youth Football League in Old Saber. I did not know so that. So they needed a feeder program. So him and like six or seven guys started a youth football program. And so by the time I was a senior, there was enough interest in town, and they restarted the program. See? I, and see what you learn on Fireside yeah. Chats with Nyberg. Yeah. Now, we have screens behind us, so mm -hmm. you'll watch those, too. In the okay, let's talk about the bobblehead guy. Yeah, so this is Bob Huesler from WFAN Radio in New York, and he also does the play-by-play -play for the Connecticut Sun, the WNBA They team. have to see this really yep. close. See, does this. And Bob <laughs> is a great guy, and he lives Do you know in him? Hamden. Yes. Oh, okay. Lives in Hamden. So he lives in Hamden, and for the past you know, 20 years or so, has been driving to Queens, New York, for WFAN radio, and they now moved to Lower Manhattan about two years ago. So he gets in his car. It's a great story. We should have wow, him on. We We've should. had him on Sports Edge in the past. Yeah. But he'd be a good guest for you. He yeah. comes from. He gets in his car in the afternoon because I think he's like a the five o'clock shift, so like 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. So he gets in his car like two in the afternoon and drives to Manhattan every day. Hundreds and hundreds now. of miles. Yes, and he's been doing that for 20-something oh years, Bob. And he loves Bob. Yeah, he's a All great All right, guy. we have a baseball here. Does yep. this baseball mean anything? It depends Is which it? one you have. I don't know which well, one. Well, I don't this know. This is I probably just, just a foul closet. ball from a game, but we have a bunch of them. Someone sent us a ball that had the Wall Street logo on it that is somewhere. We just recently cleaned out our sports closet. I took pictures it's of it. It's still a mess, by it's the way. It's a disaster. Yeah, so because I went in there. Yeah. yeah, let's not pan that way. Actually, I'll take movies of it later for you. Raven's hat. So, yeah, we were cleaning the closet, and on the bottom, 
back behind a bunch of tapes is a Ravens hat. There's a couple of them in there, but obviously the minor league team that played in New Haven. Yep. I don't recall when their last year was. I think maybe 96 or something like that. Jean is joining us. Her maiden name is Nyberg. Oh, Jean, cousin? I, I don't think so. Midwest? But maybe. Nyberg is Swedish. Uh, you pronounce it New Batty, which means New Mountain in Swedish. I thought it was Latvian Orthodox. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> no. very, very good, though. Yeah. It was very quick. All right. Um, oops, sorry. That fell down. So okay. Hat. When Eric was a young child, he had some imaginary friends. Do you care to tell us about oh, the imaginary what, friends? What are you talking about? I don't recall <laughs> anything. Talk. Obviously, my mother got involved in this conversation. Yes. When I, so my father worked in the construction trades. And when I was a kid, I would you, you listen to what your parents talk about. So he would talk about his friends that, from the job that day. So my mother, to this day, still likes to tease me about the fact, and you could ask Darren, he also yeah, knows about Darren this. Darren is in on this, too. Yes, yeah. yes, he is. Yeah, yes. he's, he's waving. He's, he's, he's the troublemaker right now that All is right, doing this. the imaginary thing. friends were named yeah, what? I don't recall what their names were, but yes, anyway. Uh, I it was Little Dick and Bobby. <laughs> Little Dick and Bobby Thank you. were the imaginary friends. All right, well, what they're calling me in the studio. We're going to tape no, something, what? No, no you have hours So, on. yeah, my, fr my father had a friend named Dick something and Bob something, so he would talk about them at the dinner table, and then in my backyard, I'd get my talk. Tonka trucks out, and I'd be playing with my friends. Apparently, when I was two, it did, so. no. I was two years old. It's not like I was eighteen. Still here. Uh, yes, yes. I hear they're still here. They're in the yeah. studio right now, cutting tape, getting ready for the late broadcast. All right, so you're married. You have two children, yes. aged. Uh, my son is nine, and my daughter is going to be eleven next month. All right, and they're Fourth both and fifth grade. They're both playing hockey, right? Yes, they play hockey for Hamden. So we lived in Hamden. Right. My wife and I. Lived in an apartment in New Haven before we got married. Then we moved to Hamden because she was a foot school teacher in New Haven. She still is. So we said, let's move somewhere close. And we lived there 12 years. And my kids started playing hockey three years ago. But now we've moved to Old Saybrook. Great and my town. kids are still playing hockey in Hamden. So my poor wife on Tuesday nights, Friday nights. Yeah. And then Saturday and Sunday mornings were playing And hockey. hockey never, ever ends. No. It, it just it, keeps it going. It started September 5th. And it will end around March 15th. Or around September 4th. Yeah. yeah and start again. Now, um... Eric also doesn't know this, but in the fireplace, yes. I, you can't really see this down here unless I move this, but we have some things in the fireplace. Uh, Kramer is really screwing me tonight. And I can feel so, this coming um, out. Yep. Props. We have, we, we have this. <laughs> now, this. That is not me, first of all. That is this not is, me. <laughs> wait, this is, um, are you playing so, er Eric so, so shooting his own horn? Yes, yeah, so that is not me. Well, it it, it looks, looks similar like to it. me. I never had hair that long. I had hockey hair, which I can dig out a photo of that. Did you have somewhere. a mullet? Yes. Definitely had a so mullet. who is this? I don't know. Kramer has a lot of. He goes through high school yearbooks when he has free time. What kind of sick person yes, is he? He does. He goes yeah. through high school yearbooks and looks for yeah. doppelgangers of people he knows. And the real MVP. Oh, that's Charles Carter. Hey, Chuck, what's happening? We miss from you from Philadelphia. That's we right. sure do miss you, Charles. And right. th that is me. Yes. Yes. That is me. Okay. And, and that's a little hockey hair, right okay, there. Okay. So. And this is little Eric. So p before we go forward here, can we just think about this? Darren Kramer keeps pictures of me playing high school which sports I did ask in his which desk. Is, which is kind of weird, actually. It's right weird. or wrong. And that's this, right. That's right. this is what you guys work on. That's a nice used to work on, on the morning down. show. This yes. is when you turned 30. Yeah, exactly. You are no longer 30. No, I'm not. How old are you? 45. He's still a child. 45, still such yeah. a child. Lisa Burns is watching. That's good. Hi, Lisa. Uh, what do you love most about being a sports guy? Uh, you know what? John and I talk about this all the time. It's the action. Look, from when I was... 10 years old so I think it was I was 10 or 12 I wrote a letter to the Hartford Current they said what do you want for Christmas like what is your wish wow. and I said I want to sit in the dugout of the New York Yankees someday and that and they printed it in the paper it's probably in my baby book at home somewhere but I was like 10 years old I always wanted access from a young age I wanted to be in the locker room I wanted to be on the field I didn't care about being did they TV. ever send you into the dugout no, no. So, but you've been there many so times. I've been there a dozen million times since then and uh, every time I'm in the dugout you know I think of that moment I say hey as bad of a day you could be having or whatever's going on in your life this was a dream of mine from a very young age you know what I'm learning about Eric right now that he's pretty melancholy melancholy what yeah meaning mean? meaning that you you look back and you appreciate things and you um, you're you're a little softer kind of guy than I thought hey, well you know in the in the newsroom I'm a different person I would say than I am at home, you know, I love this you, you have to, you know, life is short. You got to live every yeah. day like it's going to be your last. Yeah. And, you know, it's so you got to smell the roses a little bit. I love so. that. All right, so Yankees dugout. What else do you kind of pinch yourself when you're out doing sports that you get to get to do? So I didn't. Even, so I didn't even want to do this to be honest with you. Like I wanted the access, but when I was a kid, so when I was in sixth or seventh grade, I wanted to be not exactly him, but I wanted to be Don Imus. 
that's you wanted to be Don yes. Imus? I mean, obviously not. Well, Don right, because he's listen. gotten in trouble but in the years. I but I thought the idea of sitting in front of a microphone. When he was in Queens. You know, talk, yeah, talking. And I actually met him uh, at WFN a long time ago. Uh -huh. But um, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be on the radio. And then it was morphed into, well, maybe I want to be a play-by-play -play guy, like be in a, on the radio calling Yankees games or yeah. Major League Baseball games. And things just kind of morphed, you know? Like, you, you make choices in life, and you go on this oh, way. Sure. I got a job here because I answered an ad in broadcasting and cable magazine, which half the people which out there Which doesn't even know. exist exactly. anymore. That was, that was the... They posted a job right. for a, a, a producer of some sort, and I applied for it, and here I am. So do you, think, do you still think about radio? I do. I, I worked at several radio stations. My first job out of college was at CBS Radio in New York, the network. I worked on the assignment desk there. Um, so I always just had a, a joy of radio. I mean, I was one of the kids who was listening to the radio while my parents thought I was asleep listening to the ball game at 10 o'clock at night. So. Well, one thing you don't know about Eric is that he's got a great news mind, too. And when stuff breaks, he, he's always on top of it. And you produced news for a while, too. Yes, I did. So you, have, you can do both things. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about mounting a podcast you know there's one of our uh, friends on Facebook has asked me a couple times Brian Coleman who's out there who has talked about that and it's just one of those things just being so busy I should right. I need to make time for it because I, I would like to do it what would your podcast be called you know, it depends because uh, yes, little Dick and Bobby. Uh, uh, my Darren mother Kramer is going to be laughing her. You know what? <laughs> off at home right now. Oh my right. God! Well, Kramer's a dead a man when we get off here. <laughs> I'm going to give you a black eye when I get off the Facebook right now. Which he does. You can't have, tell, but can't there's tell. a lot of makeup on my face. There's, but yeah, I have a little bit of. You a took black a eye. head butt what? playing basketball on Monday. Someone yeah. butted heads into my head and. Can't because miss this nugget of, nugget of mine. So I call them weekend warriors. They're guys in their late 30s, 40s, 50s who still think that they can do all the yes. same things that they did. Well, they, they tricked 20. me. They said you want to be in a lunchtime league, and I thought we ate lunch, but we actually have to run around and play basketball. Where Where are you doing the this? The YMCA in Westbrook. Oh, so okay. So we play every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon. If anybody's out there, hey guys. Oh, that's okay. So back to the podcast. Yeah. You should do it because um, our friend Nina. Yep, I know Nina Bradley saw that. Nina Bradley. Is I would doing do like a, a sports family, you know. There's yeah. a lot of things my wife and I talk about, joke around about, so I'd be interested in doing that. All right, Annie Taylor's are you watching a baseball so she, game? So I'm supposed to be watching the Mets game is behind oh, me right yes, here. So I have is. to cut yeah. highlights of the game. So thanks, yeah. Annie. All I right. will give you a shout out later for telling me that. All right, so we need to ask questions of Eric. We've yeah. learned a little bit about him, that he has imaginary friends, that he's kind of a, a soft dad, loves his kids, yeah. they play hockey. Yeah. He uh, needs to do a podcast on top of everything else that you do. And I think people don't understand that you and John are running around like crazy people during the week. Just yeah. give me, a, for instance, what your week is well, like. Well, for like right now, John's at Yankee Stadium. We have a Yankee special tomorrow night. So John went to Yankee Stadium at noon today. And he'll come. He's on his way back now. So we did some interviews because we have a special tomorrow night. But we also have high school football tomorrow night. Right. So how many schools do you hit on a given? I mean, Friday? tomorrow we'll probably hit you know between eight or nine games, which is crazy. I mean, wish we could do more. Yeah. And, but we do eight or nine games. We'll do the Yankee special tomorrow night. But our job, in a nutshell, like no Yankee special tomorrow. We both will get in the car in the afternoon. I mean, there's there's nights where we're running back into the studio at 10 o'clock at night, and we haven't watched a play of any game. We have to cut the video that we do. So people don't understand that. People say, about time, well, you shoot the video, just hand the card off to someone else. Like, no, we get no, back they and edit, we edit our own video, write and our own scripts. And they shoot it, and they're driving yeah, and I, doing all that yeah. stuff. But, you know, um, it's all about hometown sports. Yes. You know, it's all about kids playing. Oh, Tina's watching. Hi, Tina. Yeah, say hi, Tina. Hi, Tina. Um, you know, when... When parents are watching their kids on TV, or the, or the kids see themselves on TV, and they they made that play that they never thought they were going to play. First of all, they keep that for yeah. agents that yeah. you know that are going to be looking for them, or yeah. colleges that are scouting them. It's really part of Americana, right? It is, and the best part is now with all the technology, people can save this forever. I mean, yeah. listen, when I played high school, I mean, we had the big Betamax or whatever, you know, shoot on VHS tapes. Oh, yeah, they used to be had. huge. Yeah, and that's, and uh, you know, families would use that or take still photos, but I wish I had some video from when I played, but, you know, show my kids or whatever, but I don't. So when we go out there, like, people criticize us sometimes that we do too much national sports, or we don't do enough national sports, which to me is crazy. Because you can get it anywhere. You can get it anywhere. I right. mean, you know, I'll, we'll show Yankees, Red Sox, Mets highlights, but our majority of things we're going to do is UConn, Yale colleges, and high school sports. So if you have a high school story, send me an email, and we'll try to get out there. What is your email? 
eric.dobratz at wtnh.com. And that's E-R-I-K. Hey, yes, not, correct. Not a yes, C. Like, um, somebody who's got, who wants to go into sports, what kind of advice would you give them with so many platforms these days? Where, where do you go? I would tell them not to get into sports, to be honest with you. I'm doing, I, mean, I would tell people all the time. When I speak at a, I spoke at a career fair in Hamden not too long ago, a classroom, and, and one of the kids were like, you know, I want to be on ESPN. So does a million other people. Right. Listen, uh, you know, it's no secret we've talked about it. The business is getting smaller, and it's harder and harder to break in. And I just happened to get a break. John and I had the same career path. We were producers behind the scenes and started doing more and more and, and got our shot. But it, it's hard. I mean, we posted a job two weeks ago here. And I've gotten, you know, 25 new Twitter followers and lots of emails oh, sure. from people who want this job. So I understand right. how, how much fun it is. But, you know, it, it, I would say working for a team would be the best way to go. You know, go. It, it, but if you're passionate about it, just do it. You know, just right. do it. That would be my best advice. And like, and like you pointed out, it's no straight line. It's no. going to go all over the place. You've added a third guy to the team. Bob Rumbold. Yes, Bob joined us uh, last week. John and I have known Bob for 20-something years, and it just seemed like a perfect fit. He yeah. knows the market. He, he can hit the ground running. And just uh, when John and I are here, it, it's nice to know we have someone that can kind of mind the storm when we're not yeah, here. Yeah, he's a great guy and he very is. funny. Yeah. Ralph is joining us. Go Yankees. More Yankees fans here, Red Sox. Is it straight down the middle in this state? Uh, it's You know, I like to say the Connecticut River is kind of the dividing line. If you live east of the Connecticut River, you're that's more Red Sox yeah. country. And if you're west of the Connecticut River, it's more Yankees. New Haven is more Yankees. But I would say Quinnipiac does a poll all the time. It's usually pretty close within a couple mm -hmm. of points. But, man, talk about people all the time. Oh, you're a Yankee fan. <laughs> you know, and being a Yankee station, you know, we do yeah. all these games yeah. here. So it, it's hard because we try to keep a balance, and you have to play it down the middle. Yeah. And we try the best we can. We really yeah. do. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on Fireside Chats with Nyberg. You've learned a little bit more about yes. Eric, and so have I. And uh, as you watch this and go back and watch it, if you have questions, just type them in, and you will answer I them. I would love course. to, absolutely. And all my free time here at the office. In all of his free time. And start that podcast. All right. Sounds good. You'll be Thank my first guest. Oh, good. That's great. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.